Planet Dolan. From women marrying trees to the bride's father spitting on his daughter, we count 10 bizarre marriage rituals that actually exist. How's it going? I'm Danger Dolan. I'm here to decipher some random things I found on the internet the other day that I think you might be interested in. Number 10. In certain parts of India, it's believed women born under the astrological sign Manglik receive an ancient curse that will kill their husband unless they're okay with marrying a tree. This tree must be cut down or destroyed, which is thought to break the curse and leave the bride free to safely remarry. That is, unless you find a tree with really silky smooth bark and that glistening sap. Mm. Number 9. In some African villages, it's completely normal for newlyweds to share their marital bed with a village elder, usually an old woman or even the bride's own mother. She will lend her sexual expertise in assisting the couple with having horrifying, awkward, naked sex right in front of her. Bedding rituals also occur in other cultures' wedding ceremonies. For instance, in 18th century Europe, inner circle wedding guests and religious leaders often hung around after the ceremony to watch the newlyweds get down and dirty for the first time. This was to confirm the marriage was officially consummated so it could be deemed legal. They could even join in if they wanted, as that would be a community blessing. We still have these. They're called orgies. Number 8. If you just got married in northern Borneo's Tidong community, they actually forcibly stop you from taking a leak or emptying your bowels for three whole fucking days. Disobeying this restriction will bring about years of bad luck and could cause the breakdown of your union, infertility, and the physical death of your children. To help with this difficult task, soon to be married couples are starved and given very little water. Yeah, you're welcome. Now keep having sex in front of me. I need to make sure you're doing it right. Number 7 In this Scottish tradition, friends and relatives of the bride show affection by covering her with the rotting carcass of a dead fish, expired milk, rotten food, tar, and other lovely things. These items are mixed together in a bucket and thrown over the slut you've decided to marry. Next, she is tied to a tree and taken out for a long night of hard drinking. The belief is that getting through the night means she can handle anything, including marriage. Because as we all know, being married is like getting covered in a bucket of rotting, decomposed carcass only to get drunk beyond reason and vomit until you're unconscious or preferably dead. Number 6. In China's Yugu culture, a groom is required to shoot his bride three times with a bow and arrow. Hey honey, I noticed you like being alive. Here, let me do something about that real quick. Luckily the arrows are headless, so there's very little chance of the wedding turning into a funeral. But they're still very painful. After shooting her, the groom collects each arrow and five. According to Korean tradition, on the night before his wedding day, a groom must have his feet beaten with either fish or a wooden can. Although it sounds, and likely is, painful, this is more so treated as a fun, playful tradition. It's supposed to ensure the groom delivers the goods to his new bride on their wedding night. If he doesn't, the whole village will immediately know and they'll have no choice but to bring out the fish carcass aphrodisiac. Number 4. In Inner Mongolia, there lives a group of people called the Dawa, where the bride and groom in this culture must first kill a baby chicken while both holding the knife. After driving the knife into the poor chick, they must then inspect its liver. If the liver looks clean and healthy, they are allowed to set a wedding date. If the liver is no good, they must repeat the process until they find one that's satisfactory. If I were to cut the bride and groom open, I would find Satan's glistening red sperm. Number 3. In China, the Tiwa people have a tradition where they prepare for marriage by crying for 30 days before the wedding day. Each day, the bride spends an hour expelling hot salty tears. 10 days later, she is joined by her mother and 10 days after that, her grandmother joins in. This continues until each female in the family cries for an hour a day. 
Although it sounds sad, this is actually a very joyful tradition. The women express their joy for the occasion by weeping in different tones. Everyone cries using the same material. Fry's goddamn dog from Futurama. Ugh. Number two. Kenya's nomadic Maasai people have an interesting wedding tradition. During the ceremony, the bride's father blesses his daughter by spitting on her head and all over her titties. She will then leave the village with her new husband and will not look back out of fear that she might turn into stone. Maasai also spit for other important occasions. Maasai men spit on newborns to ward off bad luck and their warriors always spit in their hands before shaking hands with an elder. You can't even grab the fucking newspaper without someone spitting in your face. Number one. France is home to one of the grossest wedding traditions ever. After a French wedding ceremony, the bride and groom's friends fill a chamber pot with any leftover bits of food and trash they have lying around. They then barge into the couple's room and refuse to leave until the bride and groom drink it. According to tradition, the disgusting toilet soup will give the couple the fuel they need for a long, sexy night. Nowadays, the garbage soup is often replaced with champagne or substituted for chocolate, but <laughs> it's still drunk out of a toilet bowl. That's it for this countdown. Never go. Decided to give her a very unique and personal gift. The jar contains 365 individual notes filled with memories, song lyrics, and reasons why he loves her, one for each day of the year. He hoped that each morning she would read one of the notes and start her day with a smile.